Theater Television presents... All-Star Comedy Carnival with Love Thy Neighbor on the buses Christmas with Wogan Nearest and Dearest Says Les. The Fen Street Gang. Father, dear father. Introduced by the old JT himself, Jimmy Tarbuck. Thank you and good evening, viewers, and a real Merry Christmas. It's nice to have you here in my house, because usually you always invite me into your front rooms, so I thought tonight, by way of a change, I'd invite you into my home, and if you look round, this is my bar. That's my bar stool. <laughs> That's my fire. And I'm not like you at home. I mean, I don't have stereo sets and all that in my house. Oh, no, I have the real thing. I've got my very own orchestra, and there they are over there. <laughs> Don't encourage them, they'll start planting pain. Now, anyway, we do have a wonderful show for you. You've got all your favourite programmes. We've got, like, On the Buses and Fen Street and Love Thy Neighbour. We've got Zsa Gabor, she's coming on in, with all her children in Father, Dear Father, Dear Father, Dear Father, Dear Father. <laughs> We've got a wonderful guy from the East who comes on with a load of snakes. He's called Abdul and his load of old cobras. <laughs> then, uh... Slip one in early on. But what kind of a Christmas have you had? I mean, I was awake at six o'clock this morning with a toy trumpet blowing in me ear and a drum going. I turned around the wife. I said, put those toys down. The kids will be in here any minute soon. They want to play with them. Oh, and how about the presents you get that you don't really want? I mean, someone's give Georgie Best a new pair of training boots. <laughs> he said, you're joking. I haven't used last year's yet. <laughs> Rackle Wells got a book on yoga. She stood on her head and near blinded herself. <laughs> I went down to the kitchen very early today, about midday, and I thought, there's a funny place for an oven-ready turkey. <laughs> it's the wife's mother having a wash down in the sink. <laughs> yes, but you see, worse was to follow. <laughs> I'd give her two spoonfuls of sage and onion before I realised it was her. It's terrible. But I must say, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all my pals who sent me Christmas cards, and I've, I've got them all over here, and thanks, lads. I mean, I got one from Tom Jones, good old Jonesy. There he is, pulling a cracker. <laughs> oh, he's a rascal. Yes? There's one of a noisy coach. That was from Brian Clough. <laughs> There's Father Christmas leaving Sir Gerald Nabarro's. <laughs> That's Sir Gerald next to Father Christmas. <laughs> or someone who looks like Sir Gerald, anyway. Yeah, someone there. <laughs> Got this one from Mick Jagger. <laughs> That's a shame, you know. His mother used to pick him up by the lips when he's a baby. Come here, you. <laughs> She used to take him shopping. She'd never leave him in the pram. She used to wet his lips and stick him on the nearest window. He used to get up there. Yes. And we've got a lovely Yuletide greetings from Harvey Smith. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'd like to thank this. Ken Dodd for this one. Merry Christmas, 1947. <laughs> He's got so many of them. Ah, now here's one of my favourite cards. This is my favourite show, Love Thy Neighbour. And if you come in close with the camera, we'll find out what they're doing this Christmas. Some mistletoe. I don't need an excuse to kiss you, you know. Ah, but other people might. <laughs> Watch it, black girl. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you going to the social club? I'm practically on my way. Okay. I won't be late. Bye, love. Good evening, Barbie. Hello. Is Bill in? Oh, you've just missed him. Oh, what a pity. I was just going to take him out for a drink. You mean you're actually going to invite my Bill out with you? Yes, love. Well, it's Christmas, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Even Sambos. <laughs> Thanks. And their wives. Give us a kiss. 
Pardon? I've caught you in a little toe. Come on. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Bill. He was only kissing me under the mistletoe, Bill. Yes, yes, yes. I caught her under the mistletoe. Yes, I'll catch you under the chin in a minute if you don't watch it. Hello, hello. What's going on? What have you been up to? Nothing, nothing. He's been kissing Barbie. Joan, it was all innocent. He was kissing me under the mistletoe. Yes, yes, it was. So tell old King Cole here it's a British tradition. <laughs> Come on, Bill, you know it's traditional kissing under the mistletoe at Christmas. Yes, is that so? Of course it is. You can kiss anybody you like, providing they're under the mistletoe. Well, Eddie's right. <laughs> Come here, too. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it! Get him a bit of your Christmas tradition. Oh, <laughs> Jango? Oh, hey, have you got your bird for Christmas? No, it's Eddie's. My, my brother gets them. Oh, are they cheap? Well, it should be. He knocks them off. Oh, <laughs> oh get out, you great black twit. You big white book. And what's the matter with you two? It's him. I tell you, Father Christmas was white. Uh, uh, not where I come from. Oh, listen. <laughs> he came from Lapland. He wasn't a nignog. <laughs> and they were reindeers pulling that sledge, not bloody elephants. <laughs> <laughs> it was me dad. Pardon? Father Christmas, it was me dad. I didn't find out until I was nearly 14. <laughs> 14? Didn't you ever suspect anything? No. But I did wonder why, after he'd left me presents, he always used to get into bed with me mum. <laughs> You're lucky. We never ever saw Father Christmas. My man was too drunk to get up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you drinking, fellas? I'll get them. Oh, is it? Pardon? <laughs> Jacko, tell me. Do you feel all right? It is Christmas. Uh, let's order quick before he changes mine, huh? Well, in that case, I'll have a large whiskey. A large brandy. Uh, I'll have a large rum. Cyril, four arms. <laughs> Eddie? What time is it? One o'clock? Where the devil's he got to? Oh, God! Oh, God. Oh, God. Talking about wives, aren't we a bit late? Well, of course we're not a bit late. If you can't get drunk at Christmas, when can you get drunk? <laughs> We've had a good time, haven't we? Huh? <laughs> hey, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> After what you'd supped, I'll tell you. We had a right skewful day. Yes, yes. Yeah, we were all friends. Yes, yeah. it all that's what friendship's all about. My friend, my dear, dear. Hang on a minute, there's one of us missing. Oh, uh, uh, we were all here. Yes, yes, but I'm talking about the turkey. I gave it to you in the grapes, Arthur. I gave it to Jacko in the Jaws and Dragon. I gave it to Bill in the Flying Horse. Uh, I can't remember being in the Flying Horse. <laughs> that was after we went in the Black Bull. Well, I can't remember being in the Black Bull. Well, you should do. That's when you said you was going to drink a pint of bitter out of the barmaid's brasserie. Oh! <laughs> There's a lace one, it all drips through. <laughs> hey, now, so what am I going to do? I've lost the bloody turkey. She'll go mad, you know. Eddie! Oh, oh. Uh, hello, love. Don't you hello love me. Right, Eddie! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! What's that to preach in there? Hey. Oh, well, I'll get it. What time do you call this? Well, I don't know, love, but it's very late. It's <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. It's Christmas Day. Ah. Oh. Merry Christmas, love. Merry Christmas. Oh, hello, love. I've uh, I finished the pass. Christmas dinner's nearly ready. Oh, good. What are we having? Roast potatoes, stuffing and cranberry sauce. <laughs> Isn't there any 
Sunday, of course. Yes, you've got a choice. Pilchards or baked beans. <laughs> oh, hello, Eddie. Merry Christmas. It might be for you, it's not for me. Look, about that turkey, I've been thinking. Yes, I've been thinking. I don't know where I've left it, you know. Look, it's still, it's not right that you should go without a Christmas dinner. Well, I've no option, have I? We have enough for two extra. Yeah. Pardon? We'd like you and Joan to come over for Christmas dinner. Do you really mean that? Yeah. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Eh? Oh. <laughs> Even white honkies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come in. Come in. Ah, something smells good. Thanks for asking us. Oh, don't mention it. It's the least we can do. And with two turkeys, there's plenty to go round. Two turkeys? That's more than enough for just four of us. Oh, it's not just the four of us. Pardon? Well, we invited some friends round for Christmas dinner. Come in and meet them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, love thy neighbour. And what was it Bill said to Eddie there? Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. I'll certainly drink to that. Good King Wednesday's last cocktail! That Des O'Connor gets everywhere, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Now, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. I'm going to have a little drink with you all. Cheers. On the face of stage, Excuse me a moment. Look, I've paid you once. Can't you clear off out of there? Go on. Get going. Now. Beat it. That's got rid of him. <laughs> oh. Get him off! Get him off! Get him! Go! Please! Can't you control that bird? What do you mean it wasn't you? Well, just out there singing and, and the next Singing? Oh. Yes. What's well, very nice singing? Very nice singing, I don't think. Now, man, I've stuff over my mouth. Can't you control this thing? Well, it's, it's very hard to control at Christmas time, you see, because he, he quite often gets mistaken for a turkey. You see? I know that. I realise now what's happened. Yes, I thought sir. he was a turkey out there, and I yes. should have told you. I know well, anyway. That. That's why I, I said it to you. And you see, if he sees anybody with a handful of, of chestnuts, he runs for his life at this time of year. Chestnuts? <laughs> Blimey, with him, you need coconuts. <laughs> The last time I saw something like that, it was stood on one leg advertising margarine. <laughs> oh. Right then, I'm just come in to sing carols outside the door, that's all we did. I didn't know you were having a company, did I? I'll go if you like. Well, I'd just like you to know that we are on television and this is a Christmas Day show, you understand. There are the cameras and everything, we're on the telly. No, don't, don't be shy. <laughs> See, because he does like the old telly sometimes, oh. don't you? In fact, he, he likes it all the time, really. He watches the shows? Watches all the shows, don't you? He loves the shows. Oh, well, uh, I've been on television quite a bit, you know? I've had a few shows on television. Yes. Have you ever seen me on the telly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I can take fair criticism. I mean, uh, what do you think of my shows? <laughs> well, this is what you really call getting the bird, isn't it? Well, look, I've got to get on with this show now. I'm sorry, you know. Well, actually, he, if you have got the old cameras going, he does do a bit himself on, on, on the television. He... The bird's a performer. <laughs> he does impressions. Does he? Yeah. Who are Vic Feather? <laughs> Vic Feather, pop up. You've got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> well, who does he do impressions of? Show him your, your impressions. Go on. He's just just getting ready now. Oh, I see. His impression of a parrot. <laughs> Don't encourage him, please. <laughs> Look, this is, a, this is a coast to coast television show. I mean, can't he do something better than that? Well, he could do his very very best impression. Edward Heath, just a minute. Edward Heath. <laughs> I don't believe a bird can do Edward Heath. <laughs> I must say, sir, I 
I'll take it all back. I was very impressed with that. You know, you should get into show business. Thank you. And, uh, I mean, have you ever thought of getting him into pantomime? Yeah, well, we've tried because... But it's, it's no good, see, because there's, there's no such pantomime as, as Dick Whittington and his emu, or um, uh, emu in boots. There's that, none of those, is there? No, no but I've got the right part for him. What? He could play the goose in Mother Goose. <laughs> yeah. It's a good it's idea. It's a good idea. I mean, it just so happens I've got one of the props here is from it? that very pantomime. I mean, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Good, isn't it? <coughs> well, what does he, he have to do with it, then? Well, he has to lay it. <laughs> Twice daily. <laughs> with matinees three times on a Saturday. Get up, get up, you fool. Take it away, cos you're well, frightening him. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Well, you see, I mean, if he's going to appear on the stage and on television, I mean, he's got, he's got to have a card, his union card. Has he? Yes, with equity and all that. Oh. And if he hasn't got a card, I mean, they'll have him ostracised. Ostracised. <laughs> 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 I've slipped another one in there. <laughs> you can't have it ostracised, can you? It is not an ostrich. It's an emu. Oh. You have to have it immunised. <laughs> Moment, yeah, now, there, yeah, just a moment. You did slip one in, and so did he. Yeah. Now, I get the jokes on this show, yeah. and it so happens that the governing bodies of this particular company, you're not allowed to appear after 5.30. So you... Here, give me my watch. <laughs> give me my watch here. Get hold of it. Stop it. Give it's a very expensive watch. Stop it's, it. It's come off, too. Never mind, it's come off. I should think so the way it's grabbed my watch. Get out. Put it back there. I'm just telling you, you and him can get out of here. You've come singing drunken carols right. at my door. You I and that emu. I never mind. You were drunk at my door. You and the bird get out of here, cos I'm not having it, you understand? Never mind. Major television show. Major television show. Now, like, yeah. <laughs> right. Why? Why? <laughs> you old dad liver. Stop it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we will now see. <laughs> we will now see <laughs> what's going on with. Nearest and dearest. Oh, don't check the box off it. Chuck it. He has chucked it. What did you get? I don't know. It's gone in the cream cake. Oh. <laughs> Number five. He's right outside, if you know, Nelly, about you finding this lace and ladders board again after all these years. Mm. Hey, it was Walter that gave us this in the first place, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, very first time you came to this house. Ah, uh, going back a bit, you know. Mm. When I'm sit sat sitting here, you know, looking back on that Christmas, I get filled with neuralgia. <laughs> Where you're wrong, you see. What do you mean? Because I had a lick of it last night before I went to bed. Ooh! And I gave the Catholic too. <laughs> Ooh, you little girl's blouse! <laughs> I know what. I'll give it to our Lily for Christmas. Hey. What? Not Lily, 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 I'll be over there. Nelly, Nelly. On the tree. Put it back there. Yes. Right. What did you get for Christmas? Oh, look, a roller skate. Look. 
Oh, only one. Ah, well, I'm getting the other one next Christmas. You see. Oh. Here, Anna Lee. Uh, what did you get for Christmas? Hi. Got a wristwatch. Oh, a wristwatch. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? I don't know. Why not? It hasn't got a little hand on it. <laughs> 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 I must get a little hand put on this watch. Here, yeah, maybe you're getting that for me for Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come here, anybody at all? <laughs> Blood and sand, it's Shirley Temple. <laughs> hey, language. If my dad hears you, he'll teach you to swear. I know, I had my first lesson last night when he came <laughs> home from Spread Eagle. Oh, Lily, what did you get for Christmas? <laughs> something nice? The best Christmas I've ever had. <laughs> oh, was it something to play with? A special toy? No, a special boy. <laughs> <laughs> Flash Gordon. <laughs> no, this is Walter. He's just come to live in our street. Oh. <laughs> is that you, Walter? You haven't had the pleasure of playing with me yet, have you? <laughs> hey, uh, Lily, where do you wind him up? Well, how do you know that Walter's learning to speak three languages? Oh. Three languages, Walter? He's quite confused. <laughs> he doesn't know which one to <laughs> Walter thinks that actions speak louder than words. Do you, Walter? And to prove it, he's brought you and Eli a little present. Have you, Walter? Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Alpha what's in there is mine, you know. Ooh, snakes and ladders. Oh. You have the snakes. Yes. And I love the ladders. Yes, that's <laughs> mine. Yeah. Hey, oh, what do you say we have a game now, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought we were going to have a game. No, we're not. You're always wanting to play doctors and nurses. <laughs> you just get sat sitting there. Come on, let's get started now. Yes. <laughs> because I'm, I'm very good at this, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, we've got to have a special prize to play for. Yes. You've got a new penny, haven't you? And you've got a new penny. Mm -hmm. And you've got a new penny, haven't you? Yeah, well, put all your new pennies on the table there, like that. What for? So that I can win them, that's why. Right. <laughs> yeah. There we are. What have I got? A six. six. I've got a six. I've got a six. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got, Debbie? Uh, 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 five. Oh, look at five. Number five. Go on, Lily. What you got? Six. 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 I just want a three to win. That's it, three. I won. One, two, three. Two! One, two, which takes you onto the big snake's head, which goes you squiggly, 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 uh -huh. this way, that way. Isn't uh -huh. it rotten? Uh -huh. It's taking you right down to the big snake's bottom. I'm, <laughs> at, the bottom. I'm at the top, our Nelly. You're at the bottom. I'm at the top, our Nelly. You're at the bottom. I'm at the top. Bottom. Oh, man. Oh, is it me because I've won. Oh. Do you remember that? Wasn't it childish? The childish things we did when we were children. Right. <laughs> Three, I won. That was two. <laughs> but I'm a snake. I tell you, I have won. Are you sure? I'm certain. Oh, then you should have a prize. Oh, what's our belly? This. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was the great comedy of Hilda Baker, Mr. Jimmy Jewell, and I've just got rid of that right crazy, crazy bird. But here's another bird, but a totally different one. This young lady's a really super singer. It's a pleasure to introduce Maura Anderson. <laughs>
a lovely singer in Amori, you know, apart from being a super singer, she's a real fine comedian in her own right. She's got a wonderful sense of humour. Like before she went on, she said, oh, you know, Jimmy, she talks like that very posh. She said, I've got a new family motto. She said, oh, the new, Millie the new. There's a wee beastie in the cellar, which means that there are runner beans up the legs of Kenneth McCullough. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another family with a super motto. It's laughter all the way with that smashing show, Father, Dear Father. Well, it's only Christmas Day. Most of them arrive afterwards. Oh, here's one from Uncle Philip. Robin's on a log. How mean. Well, I think it's nice. Except it's the one we sent him last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it is. Oh, I've dropped the drawing pin. Good morning, girls. And a Merry Christmas to one. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and he's found the drawing pin. Oh, really? It's all your fault for pinching my shoehorn. Sorry, Daddy. You know, if this wasn't the, the season of peace and goodwill, I'd clobber the pair of you with the Christmas tree. Never mind, Daddy. Here's my present to you. Oh. And mine. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Champagne? No. And, uh, uh, brandy? Um, malt whiskey? Not quite. No. Well, it, they're both the same size, so it's obviously a, a couple of bottles of... Oh. <laughs> There you are. You said you wanted a new set of clubs. Yes, yes, I did. I did, yes. <laughs> but I can't see them allowing me on the golf course with these. Golf clubs? Yes. Oh, blimey. Oh, never mind, darling. It was the thought that counts. Actually, you know, they might come in quite useful when somebody coughs while I'm putting. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. HG's Christmas dinner. Doggy chunks? That's what he has every day. Ah, but not with the chocolate father Christmas on top. <laughs> He'll be needing that when he comes back from his nice run on the on the heath. Are these slippers for Daddy? Yes, dear. I'm going to give them him after dinner. Make a change from Christmas food. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I say this card from my bank manager. At Christmas, turkey's eaten and ale and wine are quaffed. But after, come and see me to discuss your overdraft. <laughs> Mr. Patrick, sir. Mr. Patrick, I'm afraid I've got bad news, sir. What? You know that bitch next door? Mrs. Battersby? No. <laughs> no, no, sir. Her dog, her lady dog. Hmm? Well, she was out on the heath, and H.G. spotted her, and before I could stop him, sir, he'd done it. <laughs> done what? But he'd run off. 
Well, I, I, I did whistle after him, sir, but then the stupid woman got in the way, and by the time I'd sorted it out, he'd gone, sir. Oh, you, you mean H.G. is lost? Only oh, until we find well, him. Well, we must go and find him straight away. I knew this sort of thing would happen. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I should have kept the lead on him. Yes, you should have done, and then you might be lost as well. Come along, quickly. Let's get off and take the car. I've got your... Mr. Patrick? Stroke, Nanny. You roller skated into the pond. Oh. oh, Mr. Patrick, was that wise in this weather? <laughs> I ran a hot bath for you. Oh, thank you, Nanny. It's very worrying, though, isn't it, poor old thing? Oh, thank you, my darling. Not you, H.G. Uh, H.G., good Lord, yes, I'd almost forgotten about him. Look, we must go and look for him then straight away. You'll get pneumonia. Oh, yes, but I mean, he's my dog. I've had him since he was no bigger than that desk. <laughs> I'll get on to the police. They can send out a horde of noddy cars. But they could be anywhere by now. Well, yes, that's the whole point, you see. Where to look? If only we had a lead. Mr. Patrick, sir. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Hello. Hello, is that the police station? Look, I want to report that my dog... Yes, yes, and a Merry Christmas to you, too, yes. Look, I, I want to report that my dog is missing. What? Yes, yes, and a Happy New Year to you as well, as well. Yes, yeah, right. Yes, uh, and he, we, we lost it, but... What? Yeah, yeah, oh, oh uh, no, well, no, well. Uh, look, I am not joining in singing with you. Now, look, the dog is missing. We lost him on, on the heath. Uh, 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 what's that awful noise? Well, will you stop playing with your squeaker while I'm talking to you? <laughs> what's your name? Charlie Barlow? Well, <laughs> no wonder he's at large. Mr. Patrick, your hot bath is ready. Oh, thank you, Nanny. Now, look here. I, we, we, as soon as I change, we will go out and look for that dog. We'll get all the neighbours. We'll search every inch of Hampstead. Could H.G. come with you? That's a good idea, because then he can pick up H.G.'s trail. H.G.! <laughs> <laughs> He's back! Oh, dear old boy. Oh, oh Christmas, Christmas wouldn't be the same without you. I don't you think you'll say that when you see what he's done to yours personally. Oh. Timothy, take him out on the heath and get him lost again. No, dear old boy. <laughs> Let him have the slipper, Nanny. And the other one. There you go. Well done. Happy Christmas, H.G. Bless his heart. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord, where's that brandy? Well, thank you, Patrick Cargill and the cast of Father, Dear Father. And what a happy ending. And, and did I hear you cry for brandy? That's just what I'll have, a glass of brandy. Any brandy there? <whistles> ah! Oh, there you are. Good old H.G. Look what I've got for you. Here you are, son. Don't you think of that? See you all in a minute. Ta-ra, folks. He's a lovely lad, aren't you? Go on, up. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back to the show. You know, we must spare a thought at this time for all the people who are working today, like the doctors. And how many mums and dads at home bought their little boys and girls doctors and nurses outfit? I got little Jimmy one. I said to him last night, do you want a Coke? Not for me. He said, I'm operating in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was joking. I woke up, my nose was stitched together. 
And what about servants, like uh, that fella Hudson in upstairs and downstairs? I bet he's working. Yes, your rooms are ready, my lady. Yes, and there's a certain fella looks like a butler over there. I don't know if he's a real butler, cos he looks suspiciously like Harry Worth. You rang, my lord. Would you inform her ladyship that I wish to pull this festive Christmas cracker with her? <laughs> His lordship would like to pull this festive cracker with you, my lady. He also wishes me to take brandy with you. <laughs> Help yourself. A Merry Christmas, my lady. <laughs> He's on. <laughs> He's always doing that, you know. <laughs> he gets his pocket knife and cuts all round here so that he always gets the gift inside it. Oh, he's a cunning old devil. <laughs> Her ladyship says you're a cunning old devil and wishes me to take port with you. <laughs> help yourself, help yourself. A uh, uh, Merry Christmas, my lord. If she will, she's hardly in a position to judge. Uh, <laughs> coming as she does from a grandfather who married that slut Bessie Billington in the Gaiety Chorus. His Lordship wishes me to take brandy with your grandfather. <laughs> he says she, he married Bessie Billington. A slut, a slut, a slut! <laughs> From the Gaiety Theatre. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, your ladyship. Oh, that's typical of the old hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> Coming as he does from a long line of cutthroat merchant adventurers who obtained their wealth by ransacking the empire. <laughs> Her ladyship wishes me to take part with your grandfather. She says he was an old pirate, and so are you, who wouldn't give your staff. A day off at Christmas. <laughs> Down the hatch, your lordship. <laughs> you can't take anyone seriously who will go riding to hounds in a yellow knitted cap with a bobble on top. It was a, with a bobble. <laughs> His lordship wishes me to take brandy with your boy. <laughs> He says she didn't give her staff Christmas Day off either. <laughs> and she was a mean, stingy old hag. And so are you, my lady. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> you know, Lord Kitchener was right. Definitely. <laughs> said that my husband's father should have been shot at dawn. Your husband's father. But they could never get him out of bed early enough. <laughs> your brandyship wishes me to take Lord with your boy. She says you're a mean, loud mouth old toad who wouldn't give his staff a Christmas box at Christmas. Happy Lordship, your Christmas! <laughs> Inform her ladyship that the staff Christmas fund has been attended to. Ah, yes, thank you, my lord. 
to finish your brandy or you'll get smashed. He said him at that end. Have you ever stopped to think how far it is from here to there? 25 years of, uh, why couldn't you sit in the middle? He says if you don't double this measly picture, he's going to take all his clothes off and walk naked through the village, playing his bagpipes. <laughs> to the tune of Heel and Liddy, for laddie. <laughs> Bottoms up, dearie! Here you are, and a Merry Christmas to you. And a Merry Christmas. Wish his lordship a Merry Christmas from me. Wish him at that end. <laughs> a Merry Christmas. And to all who sail in her. <laughs> Through this every Christmas, Charles. Well, you know, my dear, he's strictly teetotal. He only does it at Christmas. I suppose. Oh. Merry Christmas, Charles. Merry Christmas. Oh. Let that down, Sybil. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Well, actually, a great friend of yours is having a party tonight, and a great friend of mine. He's a fellow who lives on the fat of the land. Because he fights the flab, you see. So we're going over to Christmas with Wogan. You all right, Terry? You ain't walking, do you want to lose your mind? Carl Wayne and Penny Lane, would you ever take this fellow away? He's been dogging me footsteps Come on, all day. Come on. Carl Wayne, Penny Lane. <laughs> and you go, of course. Anyway, I'm thrilled skinny that you could join us for Christmas time with Wogan. This, of course, is the lunchtime with Wogan set. But we're all having such a marvellous time here that nobody wants to go home. We haven't been able to get rid of the audience, have we? You don't want to go, do you? No! That's right, just as we did it in rehearsal. Very good. <laughs> No, but I can't eject them because there's too many of them. So we're, we hope we're going to just have a marvellous time. And before we start, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, where's that food you order? We're starving, mate. Now look, now look, you. <laughs> now look, you, you're a troublemaker. We've well, well, not you, mate. Now look, you, we can get rid... I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We, we just took the orders a few minutes ago with a lovely lady from Crossroads Motel taking the orders. I'm sure she's rushed off her feet. I wonder if she's there. Mrs. Turtle. <laughs> Mrs. Turtle. Oh, Sorry to bother you or anything, but um, do you have that order ready? That, I that certainly have. Yeah? 400 teas, 217 with no sugar, 339 watercress sandwiches, 314 bags of crisps, two meat pies, and a bottle of gin. <laughs> Who's the bottle of gin for? Me, because I shall need it when I've brought all this lot in. <laughs> Oh. 
Look who we have here. The student nurse Shaw and Nurse Price from General Hospital, ladies and gentlemen. and hot water bottles. Smelling soaps, pyjamas. Well, don't think we're not going to need them because it's going to be a long, hard night. Will you move among the audience nurses and see if anybody needs all that stuff? <laughs> Tuck them in nice. That's right, keep them warm. Put that in your lap, missus. Now, we're all sitting comfortably, so we'll begin. We thought we could spend the time here on Christmas night with a bit of a TV guessing game. Now, what we need for that are an average, a couple of average, happily married couples. Shouldn't be too hard to find in this audience. Let's see now what we can get. Come on. Let's see what we have. Here we have here. Yeah. Oh, come on. Perfect. Lovely. What about you, sir? You, madam. Oh, will you help me now, please? Come on. We want that. Please, you do understand, yes, don't you? So it's yes. just a bit of fun, honestly. Just yes. a TV guessing right. game. Oh, Can we help you? Hang on, I've got me... I've got me hand stuck. Oh, get it. Oh, well, um, Sorry. that's all right. Uh, well, anyway, uh, an average couple. Um, is, is this the mammy here? It is not the mammy. I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> well, that's funny, that is. He, he thinks you're my mummy. I'm not a mummy. You does he think I am Tootin Carmen? <laughs> There's no answer to that. Now, actually, uh, my wife got rather fed up. She, she's not my good woman. My wife got rather fed up sort of staying up there, so she went out for tinkles. No, <laughs> don't make it. She went out to make a phone call. Oh, I see. How about your husband? Has he gone out for a bit? I'll kill him if he has. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's see if we can't get another happily married couple here. I've got two ears, Governor. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, there you are. Hang on, just a minute. I know you. I, I know you. You're... you're Lionel Blair from Saturday Variety, aren't Who? you? Who? Yeah. Lionel Blair? Yeah. Never heard of him. On the good ship, lovely couple. <laughs> what a lovely couple. What a lovely couple. Sit down, please. Sit down, please, do. Now, what? Aren't they a lovely couple? Lovely couple, my eye. This is my husband. That's my wife. Mm, hello, darling. Hello, my love. Hello, lollipop. Where have you been, Mr. Mole? I've Mould? just been admiring those wonderful sets in my favourite series, The Strauss Family. I always do enjoy a really good fiddle, don't you? Don't say anything, darling. Your mother might be watching. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the, the reason that we have you here is because we're going to play a very simple game. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a guessing game. Yeah. Yeah. May I say how well the hat suits you, well, too? That's very kind yeah. of you. It's, it's a little guessing game. What, what, uh, a favourite star of television is going to come on. Ah. He's going to have his catchphrase, and the winner, mm. the person who gets it right, gets a ginormous prize. Do you follow? Oh, really? Yes. 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 Good. Well, wait now. Yeah. Now, no yeah. looking behind you, because that no. would be a bit of cheek. Oh, can, I, can I get you to look front? Yeah. Let's have our mystery guest. <laughs> Ready for anything in this. <laughs> so they, it couldn't be simpler now. It couldn't be simpler this game. Honestly, you get it first chart, I'm sure. Right, ready? Let's have your famous catchphrase, Mr. Guest. Shut that door. <laughs> what did he say? He said, shut that door. Oh, that's easy. That's Malcolm Mudry. They always say that. <laughs> It sounded more like Jess Yates to me. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't shut that door, it was je t'adore. I know, it's that gorgeous, sexy Frenchman. Slasher de still. <laughs> I should be better off at home with my leg up. Mr. Guest, perhaps we should have another famous catchphrase from you. Look at the muck on here. <laughs> 
Lord Longford. Danny LaRue. Now it's Mary Whitehouse. I think it's Sybil Thorndyke. <laughs> I, wait a minute, I, I've, just had, I've just had a quick peep. Yeah, I know it is. I can tell by the way he switched his cape. It's John Hanson. Ah, <laughs> what a dim luck you are. It's me, look. I still don't know who it is. Oh, oh dear, dear, dear. Oh, well, now, listen, look, it's quite patently obvious to me you, you, you can't win anything. It was, a, it was a coloured television set as well. Oh, that was our first prize, you know. Oh, look. That's right, Terry, but we do have a marvellous consolation prize for each contestant. A brand new 1973 Rolls-Royce windscreen wiper. Oh. <laughs> I know who that is. It's Slack Alice. <laughs> Did anybody ask for any refreshment? Why, oh. Meg Richardson from Crossroads. Right. Well. <laughs> Meg, do you think I can book a room tonight? And that, dear, you'll have to lock that door. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, look, I've brought some goodies to keep you going. Oh, no, no. Your orders will be over in a minute in the large van. So help yourselves, everybody. Uh, would you like a little bit of crumpet? Anyone? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that a killing. Uh, this is for you, Mr. Grayson. What is it? A fairy cake. Oh, <laughs> You'd better with ever on one time. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, now, look, we're all having a party here, so look, why don't we all join in? What about the audience joining in a song with us, will you? Yes! Right, right, right. Here we go, Johnny, then. Let's have Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on the one horse open sleigh. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Terry and keep up the fight on Flab and Larry and everybody else in ATV's Christmas party. You know, I went back to school this week, not to my school. I went over to a school in London called the Wandsworth School because I heard they had a super choir there and I heard these 250 lads singing and it was really super. Well, as you can appreciate, I couldn't get 250 in my little house here, but we did get 45 of the lads with Russell Burgess and I know you're going to enjoy the lovely singing of a real fine group of lads and good pals of mine, the Wandsworth School Choir.
Castle. The Wandsworth School Choir, ladies and gentlemen. Great, lads, great. Well, you must be very proud, Russell, very sincerely. Oh, I am, yes. Has anybody ever told you you look like George Mitchell? Who's he? <laughs> oh, you look nothing like him, anyway. You're looking <laughs> very sharp there in your cricket umpire's jacket. It's very nice. <laughs> I must say, your tailor's got a wonderful sense of humour. Really. <laughs> <laughs> is he your master, is he, lads? Nice fella? Yeah. No, oh, you coward. Yes. <laughs> you never said that when we were having a light tail, did you? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't know it was a wig, Russell. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, lads, I've got a great thrill for all of you. Wait for it. I'm going to sing with you. Now, what I thought... <coughs> what do you say? Get him off. <laughs> Open your mouth, I'll take a shortcut. Now, I'll tell you. <laughs> One, one. Well done, you <laughs> rascal. Now, I like, look, you can be honest with me, Russell, you can't offend me, you know that. Excuse the water. Now, I'll tell you what we're doing. <laughs> you can. Hands up all those who don't want me to sing. <laughs> this could be very close, viewers. Hands up who do want me to sing. <laughs> what a lot of class you've got, young man. What's your name? Philip. Philip. And you'd like me to sing with you? No. Well, why's your end up? I want to leave the room. <laughs> You're delivering that a lot better now. I want to leave the room. Ba bum <laughs> Well, you should have gone before you started singing. I want to leave before you start singing. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful song and beautifully sung. Ronnie Aldrich in the National Youth Orchestra. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. That was fantastic. <laughs> Who sang that? Let's see him. Stand up. Oh, you are stood up. Yes. You never told me Ronnie Corbett's kid was in the choir. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes. When you start to read, it's the ABC. When you start to sing, it's Do Re Mi. Do Re Mi. Do Re Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi Fa, Sol, La, Ti Now, lads, I'll make it a lot easier for you. Ronnie, away you go, son. Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi We're away now.
welcome back in the studio and welcome back at home. I'm really enjoying myself and I hope you are at home. And what I th oh, no. That was the voice of them all, my dear pal, Bob Todd. But right now, we really are going to see one of my favourite shows, and that's On the Buses. Come on, Vicar. Happy Christmas. He'll be working. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't take you long to get into the Christmas spirit. No, well, it is Christmas Eve, isn't it? Hey, cheers. Oh, Bob! No, we have only got to do that for it. It's full of the bottle. It's whiskey, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, let me finish. You'll get the sack for this, drinking on duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not on duty now, am I? I just finished. Yeah. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with me. Bloke left it on the bus. Well, that makes it even worse, isn't it? That's lost property. You should have handed that into me right away. Yeah, so you could drink it instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. Typical inspectors, you know. Always pinching things. I'm going to report you for this. Come on. I'm going to push off down it. Hey, hey, no, no. You're going to stay behind and check that bus for lost property. And everything you find will be handed to me personally, right? Everything? Every mortal thing. <laughs> Come on in, let it be. Come in. I've got to add you into the inspector. <laughs> Come on, love. She'll be all right in a minute. She's had one too many. And I've had two too many. Yeah. <laughs> I feel awful. You look awful. Still does nothing new. There's a lovely man on the bus. I love a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, you're going to stay behind and check that bus for lost property. And anything you find will be handed into my office for safekeeping until such times as it's claimed by its rightful owner. Right? Excuse me a minute, Mr. on top of the bus. What's in it? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps he was Father Christmas and he's left us his toys, eh? <laughs> Blimey. I've never seen one as big as that before. <laughs> and it ended up Blakey. After all, he did say anything we found. <laughs> hey, Blakey. Oh. Uh, we did find some lost property. Uh, what did I say? I'll check that in right away, then. One sack plus contents. No, 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 no. Check the contents as well. We don't want you accusing us of pinching anything. Yeah, you've got to do it properly, Blakey. All right, all right. I know my job. Don't worry about that. <laughs> 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 He's been good. <laughs> Get out of here. 
You've got some purpose, ain't you, Arthur? Listen, mate, that is genuine lost property, and I've handed it over to you, so you've got to look after it till it's claimed by its rightful owner. Don't talk, Daft. I'm not spending my Christmas looking after that blooming thing. He's a pigeon hole, not goose hole. Well, mate, I've handed it over to you, so it's your responsibility. No. <laughs> you just lost the lost property. <laughs> well, you better find it again, mate. I'm not signing you to off until that goose is caught. How do you know it's a goose, then? That's the girl. Could be a boy. A gander. Why don't you tell the difference, then? Well, you just look up its <laughs> Oh, it's a girl. How do you know? <laughs> Fresh turkey we got, Mum. Yeah, and it running round the farmyard this morning. It was. <laughs> Mum. Well, oh. I think it's running round the depot now. Hey. Look. <laughs> <laughs> You drive off and I'll catch it. Right, right. come on then. Give it, Bonnie. Right, hang out there. Bonnie, 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 Bonnie. Where are you? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Give me the flowers. The bag's burst. Oh, that's all right, Mum. It's soaking up all the broken eggs. <laughs> State of me, look. What am I going to do now? <laughs> there it is, look. Come on, let's get it. You <laughs> stupid idiot, Ollie. Where's the goose? There it is. He murdered it. You must have got away. I'll phone the police. They're going to love him, sending them on a wild goose chase. Oh, 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 right. I'm making out a full report about this. Don't worry, Blackie. I think the goose is doing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll tell you what, though. Mrs Butler will have her Christmas dinner. <laughs> goose is very tasty, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that goose don't have you for his Christmas dinner, mate. <laughs> Well, there you go, that smashing team from On The Buses. Thank you very much. Well, I'm just going to have a little quiet... Ah, could be a guest. <laughs> hey, David Nixon! Jimmy Dow. David, how are you? Oh, so, there he is. Oh, hey. Well, David. What a pleasant surprise. How about a couple of tricks for our party? With pleasure. Would you do me a great favour? Would you go and pay the taxi off? For me, he's waiting outside. Oh, certainly. Uh, well, take it out of the pound you lent me last Christmas. Oh, OK. <laughs> and here's another way to make money. A little idea I've got for you to beat the rising cost of living in the new year. Jim won't mind if I borrow one of his Christmas cards. It's very simple, this idea, and anybody can do it. All you need is £100 to start with, and if you haven't got it, borrow it, because you'll soon get it back. You start with £100, and you pay it into the bank. And then on Monday, you go out, you, you draw from the bank £40. So we'll call that withdrawals, you see. And that leaves you in credit, C for credit, that leaves you 60, doesn't it? I think, yes, that's about right, £60 in credit. And then on Tuesday, you draw out £30, and that leaves you uh, first one to get it. You must be a chartered accountant, the lady at the back. The lady with the fur hat, £30. And then on Wednesday, you draw out £18. That leaves you uh, 12 And on Thursday, you draw out the 12 That leaves you nothing. So you have withdrawn 40 70 88 and uh, 90 100 you've withdrawn 100 pounds and your credit is 60 90 102 so you put the two pounds in your pocket pay the 100 pounds back and start again next week <laughs> why not it's worth trying well there you are there's my little christmas box for you and speaking of 
Christmas. Oh, that's pretty. You can get some lovely wrappings for Christmas presents these days. I went into a shop to buy a box for my wife's present, and the fellow behind the counter said, I've got a beautiful red box for you, and I said, it's nice. Have you got one a little bit bigger? He said, yes, I have a yellow one that's a little bigger. I said, where is it? He said, it's inside the red one. I said, well, that's ridiculous. How can it be bigger? And he said, well, because the red one fits inside it. So I was impressed, and I said, I'll buy your yellow box. The only thing is, have you got something I could keep it in so that it'll be clean when I get home? He said, I've got the very thing. I've got the red box. You can put it in that. So I bought them both, and I still don't know how he did it. <laughs> Mystifying. I wonder what Jim's got behind his bar. He won't mind. He's a nice fella. I love looking behind people's bars. What's he got? Oh, eggs. Matches? Haha, uh -huh. how very fortunate. I'd like to, uh, I would like, I, I've got something here rather spectacular that I want you to try yourselves. Anybody can do this. All you need is three empty glasses. They are a bit empty tonight. Oh, we'll start later. Three empty glasses that you fill with water and then a tray that you put on top, like this. Just any old tray or a baking tin or something like that. You put the tray on top of the glasses and you take the three matchboxes and this is what happens. You don't need the inside bits. You, you throw those away, just the sleeves you need. You put the three sleeves on the tray. I hope Jim won't mind. He won't mind. He's a very nice fella. He's got a lovely pad here, too. He's very wealthy, old Jim. He's got tons of money, you know. And I'll say this about Jimmy. He never boasts about his money. Never boasts. You could sit at the bar with him all night. You wouldn't know he had a penny. <laughs> right. He's not back yet, is he? <laughs> right. Right, now three new laid eggs, one on each matchbox, and this is a kind of do-it-yourself uh, sober, sobering up kit, you see. I mean, if you can do this, you've got to be sober. You line them up over the glasses, and all you need now is a little courage, a bit of luck, and, of course, a roll on the drums. And it goes like that. And the eggs are the Jimmy, what a hard trick to do. I want you to do it in your best room, and I want you to do it in your best room. And if you need any help, there's my card. Nixon and Co. Carpet cleaning, a speciality. Of course. Let's have a drink, you and I, shall we? I'll pour one of your drinks for you with the greatest of pleasure. Thank you, and one for yourself. That's very kind of you. Because we're going to watch a great friend of David's and of mine, that super comedian, Says Les. <laughs> means, of course, that once again we have Sid Lawrence with us. Again, it's Glenn Miller, Long Johns and Wintergreen. <laughs> I like the sound of that band. I like Sid Lawrence. He's the only band leader I know who thinks that a semi-brief is a dwarf with asthma. <laughs> <laughs> nice to welcome her back again from their very successful tour of abattoirs and knackers yards. <laughs> and may I wish them a Merry Christmas wherever they lay. Well, it is Christmas. You can always tell when it's Christmas because the shops are full of Easter eggs. <laughs> Personally, I don't know how you found Easter. I found it very expensive and half of it wasn't fit to drink. <laughs> I bought my mother-in-law a nice fireside chair which cost me £25. And the first time I plugged it in, it fused. <laughs> she bought me a very unusual present this year. It was a celluloid nightshirt and a candle. <laughs> I bought the wife a fanny cradock cookbook, but she can't use it because every recipe starts off by saying, take a clean pan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying we've got a messy kitchen, but we set the mouse traps with penicillin. <laughs> I bought my eldest daughter a lovely doll. It walks, talks, wets, its hair grows. Only cost 15 bob. So believe the bastards are six pound each. <laughs> Every time it walks past, it looks like a good sucker. <laughs> what a party, Christmas Eve, a nice party. The mother-in-law was there with a face like a disused quarry. <laughs> you can tell what she looked like when it's a blindfold and mistletoe. <laughs> <laughs> what a woman, she makes the godfather look like Uncle Remus. <laughs> Bit of an accident, our my baby daughter was crawling about the floor and she swallowed a magnet. Didn't do her any harm, but she keeps facing north. <laughs> Every time we pick it up, a nappy's full of nails. 
<laughs> well, that's what Christmas is all about with children. And I heard a story the other day. Actually, I was in the church myself at the time. A little child walked in up to the vicar. He's a very nice man, our vicar. He hasn't got much of a sense of humour. In fact, he has to make an appointment to see a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this lad had a little cardigan. It was fastened together with a safety pin. Poverty with his every line of his youthful face. His eyes were like limpid lagoons, brim with tears. And the vicar said to him, what can I do for you, little man? He said, it's Christmas. And my dad's up there. The vicar couldn't speak for choked emotion in every syllable. He patted him on the head, he said, Heaven is your door on the roof, checking the lad off. Well, that's all from Yorkshire's Tone Deaf and Fallen Arch Clinic, so take it away, Jimmy! Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, my good friend, Les Dawson. What about that golf swing? I don't know he played golf. Well done, Les. For... Oh! What's that? Someone throwing snow? It's a golf ball. TJ. I never knew Tom Jones played golf. He must have heard you can get a birdie on the golf course. <laughs> well, anybody playing golf at this time of night must need the practice. Uh, can I have my ball back, please? Tony Jacklin, Rose! <laughs> Tony Jacklin, folks. It's great to have you. Don't move. You've got a divot stuck to your top lip. Look at this. Have you seen that? Devolve it, Jim. It's the new image. New image? You're carrying your own rough round. Don't you talk to me. Don't you talk to me. The last time I played with you, I lost five balls. One in a lake, one out of bounds, and three in your air. <laughs> the golfer's getting the funnies in, isn't he? <laughs> Don't you ever got my lovely barners? This is what you call rough. Yeah, dandruff. Bubum. <laughs> no bubums. Just sit down. But you'd never ask. <laughs> I've got something to tell you tonight you'll never believe. They've only asked me to play in the British Open. Good for you. Hey, isn't that wonderful? And I thought I'd ask your advice, because you won the Open in that lucky year you had. 
<laughs> what a lucky year. Well, you won the Open and beat me in the same year. That's a lucky year. <laughs> no, seriously, Tony, no, you know, jokes apart. Do you think I should play in the Open? The way you play, Jim, you'd be better off indoors, my old mate. <laughs> Jacqueline, two, Tarbuck, uh, nil. <laughs> now, seriously, Tom, I mean, what do you think of my putty? Pretty good, Jim, pretty Thank good. Thank you. And my long irons? Not bad, not bad. Now, what do you think of my driving? I agree with the judge. A 12-month ban. <laughs> <laughs> Will you blow into this? Why? My chips are cold. Boom, <laughs> Anyway, you know it's Ryder Cup year. Do you think we can win the Ryder Cup, Tony? I think we've got a great chance, Jim, at Muirfield this year. Really a great chance. Well, so do I of your playing. I mean, what kind of a thrill do you get when you pick for the Ryder Cup team? Well, it's a marvellous thrill. You know, it's a great thrill to be picked to play for your country. It's nerve-wracking, but we enjoy it tremendously. I had that same feeling when I played in the Curtis Cup. The cu that's a women's competition. <laughs> Look, you enjoy yourself your way, I'll enjoy myself my way. <laughs> Oldies but goldies, folks. <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> But, you know, I can't wait. I have great fun in the summer. I play in these show business tournaments with Tony. They're what they call pro-ams. Don't you think you should explain to him what a pro-am is? Yeah, well, a, a pro-am is like if Tony and I are partners, he's the pro. And he's the ham. And... <laughs> <laughs> and the way the jokes are going, the ham's going off. Now, <laughs> the thing is this, you know, <laughs> tell them about your first visit to America. No, I couldn't tell them. Oh, they're great tales. Oh, well, I'll tell them. No, Tony no, went maybe, to... Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I played in a tournament in America, Arnold Palmer wasn't playing in the particular tournament, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get his caddy. And uh, I didn't know the course very well. We went up the first hole. I had a good drive, and I said to the caddy, what do I play here, caddy? He says, well, Mr. Palmer always plays a four iron here, Mr. Jack. And I said, that's good enough for me, four iron. Bang, middle of the green, perfect length. Second hole, a short hole. What do I do here? Mr. Palmer always plays a three iron, Mr. Jacklin. Bang, middle of the green again. Marvellous. This goes on all the way around the course to the 17th hole. When we get, it's a blind second shot and there's only a marker post to look at. You, you couldn't see. see the green. Couldn't see the green. The marker post there says, now what? He says, uh, well, Mr. Palmer always plays a six iron here, Mr. Jacklin. I said, good enough for me, the six iron. Bang, perfect. Straight on line, right on the marker post. Can't wait to get to the top of the hill to see where the ball is. Get to the top of the hill, I'm 50 yards short of the green. I look at the caddy, I said, hey, my ball's 50 yards short. He says, funny that, Mr. Palmer's always 50 yards short of the green. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? How about that? Well, very sincerely, you know, I think you're a great ambassador for our country. He tells a very good joke. You don't play golf too badly. And he sings a very good song. Thank you, Ronnie. Tarbuck swings, but Jacqueline sings. Take it away. Whispering while you cuddle You should see his new house, and this is quite true. He's so mad on golf, there's his flag in the loo. Whispering so no one can He was once in a bunker, a bad shot he made. He played there for hours with his bucket in Spain. Little whisper seems to He's change. got a new club, it's made out of oak, to use on Trevino when he starts to joke. I know it's true. Yes, we're pals through and through. Sing along, son. <laughs> whisper and say you'll never leave. Jacko's moustache has gone to his head. He put it in curlers when he goes to bed. Whisper and say you'll never leave. The first one he grew was like a bird's nest. They say it's a transplant from Dave Thomas' chest. Whisper and say that you did. Enough of the jokes. Get out the champagne. He's a credit to golf and long may he reign. Whisper in the night. He once Mr. Putt. It was only that near. Guess what he said? It wasn't oh dear. Whisper in the night. Well, this is better than having Rackle Welsh on the show for me. Well, I don't know about that, but anyway, <laughs> Jacko and I are going to have a talk about golf. I'll put him right with your putting and all that, son. And we're going to watch the Fen Street Gang. Come on, Tone, sit down. Come on. Oh, there you go. Right. 
of the home stretch, yeah. another three mouthfuls, and it's straight onto the end. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, no. I'm still hungry. Yeah, I don't no. think you've got a stomach, Abby. You've got a combine harvester down there. Yeah. Here you are. Perhaps you'd like to eat this. Oh, great. Thanks. You dare you guts. That's for tea. Oh, oh pull a cracker, dear. Come oh, on, yeah. Dear. Eat oh. last bit of Christmas pudding. I thought I had. Mmm, <laughs> go on. Don't worry, Dennis, you've got the sixpence. Hey, <laughs> it's a right. 50 pence piece. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm costing you, see? Oh, me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to raise your glasses to our genial host and well-known ornithologist. Hey, oh, Bird fancier, Peter Craven. Peter Craven, speech, speech. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to know that my current interest is in the blonde Swedish bum wiggler. <laughs> but I hope to be studying on the nest in the very near future. <laughs> no, seriously though, no, seriously, I would like the gentlemen to raise their glasses to the two nicest bits of crackling whatever cooked us Christmas lunch. Sharon. Oh, Sharon. Sharon hi. And Maury. And Maury. Oh, oh. What time's tea then? Oh, <laughs> <Sharon>. <laughs> Got something in your eye, have you? <laughs> no, something beginning with M. Maniac. Mr. Tow. No wonder you eat so much, you miss your mouth with half of it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Frankie. Oi, look! Oh, 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 Thank you, Abbott. Shall we have a run now? I got over. Yes, you have. Go on, Dean. Oh, what you doing? <laughs> Open your mouth and suck my blood. Abbott cleans as he sweeps as he cleans the oh, hay. Oh, 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 come on, Dean. Come and have a Christmas cuddle. How neat. Oh, blimey. Oh, 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 dear. <laughs> Into two teams. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. First one to pass the balloon through his leg. Don't leave off. We're having a post-gut bash slump, aren't we? Ah, oh, fiddle. I want to play a game or something. Yeah. Why don't you go and play with the toys your mummy give you? <laughs> well, then I'm a consenting adult these days. I hope my mum ain't bought me any more toys or I'll kick a false teeth down her throat. <laughs> To dearest little Francis from Artie Hilda. Stupid bag, I've got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely second childhood, isn't it? Never got over its first one. Oh, look at that! A raffia weaving set. Oh, Shall I make a basket? Eh? You are one. <laughs> Just be quiet and give us some peace, eh? Something beginning with S. <coughs> Ceiling. How do you know? <laughs> I know the way you spell. Yeah, come on, it's down to the Queen's speech. Right. Yeah, snuggle, snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> One game. Oh, all right, one. Well, just go and hide, will ya? OK, I'll... <laughs> Let's got rid of that book. <laughs> yeah. How many of you counted before you come and look for us? Who said anything about looking for you? <laughs> I'll play properly. All right, I'll... we'll give you a hundred then, all right? OK, I'll... Oh, He's mad, he is. What's he going to hide in there? The bread bin? Yeah, there's no chance of him jumping out the window, is there? Yeah, hopefully we're ten floors up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 99, 100. Here, Moore, do us a favour. Go on that 
surprised at finding him, eh? Oh, come on, Dan. All right. Here we come, ready or not. Oh, blimey. <laughs> He's not there. Huh? I mean, mad then. He's got to be. That's the only way in or out. No, truly. Den even looked to see if he'd stuck himself to the ceiling with the sink plunger. But he hadn't. <laughs> well, he can't disappear, however much you want him to. Hey, you sure he looked everywhere? In a cupboard? Yeah, even that funny one under the sink. <laughs> no, that ain't a cupboard, Den. That's a rubbish chute. It takes it all down the bottom of the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we ain't. You want a bet? Thank you, the crazy characters from Fen Street. Well, I don't know where the time's gone, ladies and gentlemen, but I've really enjoyed myself with you. And at this time of year, there's a super message. It's peace on earth and goodwill to all men. And that's all I wish all of you. And we'd like to end our show like this. <laughs> Like the ones I used to know. Laura Anderson. Tony Jackman. May your days be merry and bright. And my favorite character. And may all your Christmases be wild. Join in at home with the Wandsworth School Choir. Boys. TV, from the heads of programmes down to the lads here on the floor and all the artists, our message is a very Merry Christmas, good night and God bless you. Merry Christmas.